Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is a ramble. And it comes to you from that city right below you, New York, New York, until midnight tonight. This is Lori Thompson. Yeah, Lori Thompson. I'll repeat that again. Uh, this, uh, wait a minute, that is Lori Thompson. <laughs> Okay, I'm so relieved. And and she used to do uh, the newscast, and you were more than that. You were my aide de camp on the morning show in San Francisco. Yeah, it, it was fun. We almost did. We did kind of a, a satire of the news because it was a lot like the Daily Show before the Daily Show. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was just fun, and we didn't take ourselves. Too seriously, and they never griped about the way he did the news, did they? Never... No, no. It was I like it. It was very interactive because you know you could pop instead of like here now the news. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would we would spoof. It was almost like a spoof, which I I loved. Yeah, because I think yeah. But can you imagine doing the newscast today with all that Trump is up to? Oh my gosh! I've been, you know, just staying abreast of that trial yeah. is is a full time gig, and well, so I. Yeah, go ahead. No, I've been try. I have been trying to just like read everything, but it's it can become a full time job. Well, it can become a full time job. The problem with it is he sucks out so much oxygen from the room that yeah. other stories get shunted to the side. Like, for instance, um, I don't think I've heard in the last week of anybody talking about Gaza. No. And, no, and, and on the news, it's kind of like, oh, here's what happened in Gaza today. Ukraine, nothing. <laughs> nothing. And it's yeah. all because he sucks all the oxygen out of the room. And I think the big problem is, is that Americans... Uh, have a l small attention span. Exactly. They exactly. can't. They can't deal with more than one story at a time. Right. And plus, he's he's good color. You know, he's you never know when he's going to say something outrageous. And what the the judge had to kick one of the um, one one of the people on the stand mm -hmm. out um, yesterday. Well, he didn't kick him. He didn't kick him out. He uh, got told the jury to leave while he admonished him. Right, right. But what gets me about that is these people then go home at night. They're not being sequestered at a hotel. Which is odd. And they turn on the news and see what happened while they were out of the room. Yeah. So, I mean, what's the sense of it all? Yeah, it's like Rashomon with the jury, you know. Yeah. Here's what happened. <laughs> yeah, 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 but I mean, uh, you don't think these people are going home at night and looking at the news? They they have to. But, you know, if if only to get a glimpse of themselves. Oh, that tie really works for me, you know. Well, no, but they and, don't they don't they don't get seen on screen at all. So. No. In fact, there right. is no video allowed, in, you know, in the uh, or for there is video, but it is uh, it's a closed circuit video that goes to an overflow room. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And people are arri people arrive at like four thirty and five a.m. just to get tickets to the overflow room. The over yeah. Yeah, well, the, uh, the the news people get priority in the overflow room. Yeah, but they they get to see like close ups of Trump and see him nodding off and going to sleep. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's the only thing about Trump that I consider to be human, and we're making fun of it, and that is I've been in court, you know, with our little thing, and we only had like about maybe five days. Our little thing, five days, right? And yeah. was, I had a hard time staying awake, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, Trump is safest when he's sleeping. So <laughs> I think so. No, when he's asleep, nobody can get him. And yeah, is the thing. that was Ruben, Bob Ruben's line. You know, it's it? funny, I, I had something I wanted to bring up to you, and I thought about it last night, 
and because of my age, I've completely forgotten what it was. Plus, what is it about great ideas right before you fall asleep? And yeah. you're like, oh, I can remember this. And then you maybe give yourself some uh, mnemonics or some memory aids so that you can remember it in yeah. the morning. It, Poof, it's gone. So, I mean, I used to keep a, a pad and paper by I the bed. I think it was one of those things I thought of just as I was drifting off to sleep. Yeah. And those always seem like great ideas. And if you write them down on a pad next to your bed, <laughs> you wake up the next morning and they make no sense at all. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like when you're on a, a shroom trip, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, you th <laughs> that's a revelation. Yeah. No, and I wanted to ask, one of the things I want, have wanted to ask you, what, what was the first radio job you ever had and where was it? Okay, well, the first paying one, I did uh, the, the NPR affiliate at my university mm -hmm. was run by students. It was great. We did almost everything. Okay, the first paying gig. Paying, okay. It was, it was actually, it was idyllic. It was a country station whose motto was, and because their call letters were WHPI, making whoopee 24 hours a day. So that, I know, well, WHPI, whoopee. <laughs> and it was above a bank and in a little town called Heron, Illinois. I think it still exists. And it, the first night was right around Christmas. It was around in December for sure. Mm -hmm. And it, there was a light snow falling and we were on the second floor and it was right on the tiny town square. And it looked like a Norman Rockwell painting. Right. It was that beautiful. Right. And I thought, I think I'm going to like this radio store. Wow. And, now, yeah. And, and you did the news or were you doing playing? No. I was a jock. You were a jock. I, I remember, I can remember the songs that were popular. Okay. It was, I'm, I'm going to love you back to loving me again. That was a Loretta Lynn, I think. Really? And then Roll on Mississippi by one of the few black country artists mm -hmm. um, until Darius Rucker came along mm -hmm. and with Charlie Pride. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were, no, I hear, occasionally I'll hear one on some alt country station mm -hmm. and go that's from that i only i was only there two months I, well, do I, I never played um I, I never ever worked a country station but here's an interesting factoid for you i worked Ooh. in houston texas and most of the time if you were playing top 40 in houston texas there were at least one or two country songs in the top 10. sure so you played them and I, my favorite of all time was Buck Owens. Oh, he was great, that Bakersfield sound. Yeah, but I mean, it also the sense of humor in his songs. Yeah, It was like, great. I got the hungries for your love and I'm waiting in your welfare line. <laughs> now, come on. I know, and he also did, he did have a good sense of humor, but he also wrote some good ballads like Crying Time. Mm -hmm. I just listened to that. I have that on my iPad. And uh, he did some. And the Beatles some even did, the Beatles even did one of his songs. I'm they, gonna put you in the movies. Uh, they're gonna make, they're a, gonna big make a big out star me. out of me. Yeah. <laughs> All I got to do is act naturally. Right. Yeah. He had he, Owens was great, and then he had uh, the Buckaroos. Mm -hmm. That was the name of his background band, mm -hmm. and he had a son that looked just like him who played a uh, red, white, and blue guitar. So, right. but right. you know who discovered him later and loved Buck Owens and kind of revived that Bakersfield sound um, was Dwight Yoko. Mm -hmm. and he did it well too. Wow! So that uh, Buck Owens was a big favorite of mine. But we yeah. also had down there we had uh, what I would call the uh, Louisiana sound. Oh, okay. Because this was Houston, Texas, which is a little bit away from Louisiana, so there's a lot of Cajun music. That we That's played was Zydeco. that made yeah that made it yeah. into the top ten. Now I got to love Zydeco. I mean I just yeah. love. I think it's the best music in the country. Well, it's it's it can be so many things. Um, it can be lively. You can dance to it, mm -hmm. or it's got some nice slow songs, and so it kind of touches all bases. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Oh, by the way, folks, if you looked at it, and I kind of seemed. To, change the picture here it's only because i'm going to another source where i'm in better sync 
I have trouble Ooh. going out of sync. <laughs> and that just does that just mean that the audio and the video aren't together? Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, right. A little off, a little nice. off. Enough that it drives me nuts. <laughs> but I'm, I'm with with we got our money, and I'm going to buy a whole brand new machine here that I think cool. has more power, and then it won't do that. Yeah, and of course after after spending like sixty five hundred dollars, it'll probably still be out of sync. But you know, I mean, <laughs> save the receipt. Yeah, save <laughs> save my receipt exactly. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about Amazon. You know, they got a record of it. You just to call it. And, you know, write them tell there's a problem, and yeah. they'll just send you a different one. Yeah, but anyway, uh, uh, I I'll tell you something very strange about me. I suddenly one day woke up and found that my favorite music to listen to was country. Wow. So that I knew more about country music than I almost knew about any other kind of music. I mean, I would love listening to really, but good stuff, you know, the real yeah. country stuff that was based in some kind of folk tradition. Yeah, yeah Merle Haggard was a good one. Merle Haggard was very good in that. Of course, Johnny Cash, terrific. Um, I loved Buck Owens. Uh, I love all the Zydeco stuff. All the, like for instance, I uh, got to know Dr. John. Yeah, Mac, Mac we had Rebinac. him on. To yeah. yeah, Mac Rebinac. And he uh, he taught me all about, all about Cajun music. He taught me all about that music I'd been listening to all my life and didn't realize that it had its roots in Louisiana, like Little Richard's music was all Louisiana based. Yeah, geography yeah. is so much of uh, the art. Yeah, and, and and you had the guys like Professor Longhair, whose music I used as a theme song in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, Rum and Coke, was it? Rum and Coke, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but he taught me about Professor Longhair because he said Longhair is the guy who kind of taught him how to play piano. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But you remember we had back in once Dr. John and we rented a keyboard. We brought a keyboard in and he played and Harry Connick did this too, um, different styles. And Mac was saying that he uh, played in brothels when I, he was just a teenager. Yeah, I think this was actually a breakfast with Bennett at the uh, St. Francis Hotel. Oh, okay. We actually had um, uh, him playing with our band, Rebinac. And the minute he started playing that piano with the band, which was Dick Bright's band, which is as white as you can get, right? <laughs> all of a sudden, with just that piano, the whole band sounded, it had a glow to it. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. swing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, in fact, uh, you know, they're doing Did so we have much. Harry Connick Jr. on? Oh yeah, and he was wonderful. God, I don't. Did, they, they're whole people I don't remember we had on. Oh yeah, he was awesome. He um and he did something kind of like what Mac did for us, uh, tutorials on all these different kinds of music. Like we know Zydeco, but within that there are subgenres, yeah. and then uh, with, you know in New Orleans jazz subgenres. And he knew yeah, those were uh, two of my favorites. I love, I mean, I love New Orleans music. I just... I love New Orleans. You know, the wonderful thing about New Orleans, folks, if you don't have the chance, if you've been to New Orleans, of course you've been there. You're... you're oh, gosh. Yeah. I used I went, I took the train there when I was in college because my cousin lived there. Yeah. And it was a blast. It has, A, the best music anywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. literally anywhere. You will not find greater music. And the best food you will find anywhere. There is yeah. no food better than Louisiana cooked food. That's yeah. why you should go to Popeye's. Yes, Popeye's. I didn't experience until I went to New Orleans and found our, our Lafayette. My, then my uncle lived in Lafayette. Yeah. So I went down there once and we got Popeye's for my birthday because I'd never had it. And it's pretty authentic. Oh, It, it is. It, 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 who was it? Oh, oh Paul Perdome told me you remember we had him on the show too uh, and he came in and cooked for us he brought food you remember oh and it was out of this world but anyway he told me he said you want the best Louisiana cooking outside of New York outside of Louisiana go to Popeye's 
Yeah, it's. It, he said, I was number one, he said they have the best red beans and rice anywhere, yes, including they, my own. And he oh, said, Oh, wow. He said, All the guys that started Popeyes were my proteges. So it, nice. it, it's really authentic Louisiana cooking. That's why the, their chicken is just so different from any other. You go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, forget it. It's good. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, I, I won't argue with it. Well, no, if I go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's the same chicken I was buying back in the 60s. It was, it, they haven't changed the recipe. It's kind of, that way is the same way at McDonald's, you know. They haven't changed the taste of their hamburger. In fact, they haven't changed the smell of their restaurants. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was um, in France, I was out in the middle of France somewhere, and I wanted to get something to eat. And we passed a McDonald's, and I said to whoever I was with at the time, whatever wife I was married to then, <laughs> uh, uh, let's stop and go to McDonald's. And she went, eh, come on. I said, well, I know one thing. They serve wine in McDonald's it, in, yes, in we, France. Yeah, in yeah. Barcelona, too, because you and I yeah. ate there once. But, but you, then you remember, you walk into McDonald's. And what's familiar? Not the hamburgers, not the fries, not the whatever. It's the smell of the restaurant. <laughs> it was just like the smell of a restaurant at McDonald's here in New York. Yeah, so, and have you noticed when you're hungry, that smell is great. But when you're not, it's not great. <laughs> but, but Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, I, I got to tell you, Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, has never changed. It's still the same. It's still as good as it was back then. But along came Popeyes, and I said, "This is better," you know. Much. Plus, much. I can I can still get the red beans and rice. They always have the red beans and rice. Yeah, and, and it, it seems healthier. Are there healthier options? I, I was at a restaurant in, New, in San Francisco. It was like a Cajun restaurant. I mean, it's claimed to be Cajun, right? Yeah. And I um, uh, uh, ordered the red beans and rice. And it came, and I ate the red beans and rice, and I said, um, have you got the manager of the restaurant here? And he, they said, yeah. I said, could you send him over? And he said, yeah. And he brought the, the guy came over, and I said, your red beans and rice are okay, but they're nothing compared to what you can get a block down the street at Popeyes. I said, what did he say? If, I said, if I were had a suggestion for you, get a bucket, go down there, buy their red beans and rice, and that's what you should be serving here. <laughs> right. Uh, I can't remember his reply, but I, I think it was something. In fact, I've heard it's pretty good. Yeah. You know. The what? The, the, he said, "I heard it's pretty good." It, you know, it's. I love Popeyes. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it was my birthday, and they had a party, and we. They said, "You've never tried it. Let's try Popeyes." We have a Popeyes right down the street here. We go to it all the time. You know. Yeah. The only trouble yeah. with it is, is that at least here in Harlem, uh, every Popeyes is a franchise. Mm -hmm. And apparently nobody's going around to make sure they're doing the stuff like they should be doing it. So sometimes I go and I get their chicken, and it's terrific. You know, it's wonderful. It's succulent and all of that. And the next time I get it's all dried out, you know. Oh, yeah, I wonder That's if that had – it might have something to do with the oil they're using or the age of the oil or that. Yeah, that could be or a lot Or it could be it. how long the chicken's been under the hot lights. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But I mean, the attitude of the chicken. You get a nice fresh batch, and I got to tell you, it's terrific. It's really yeah. terrific. So. I was highly pleased and surprised. I was amazed. Popeye. Amazed. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so that's my that's my story about Popeyes. <laughs> yeah, a worthwhile option if you are. Do you are notice really how this conversation has gone? The question I asked her was, what was your first job that you got paid for? It was at a country station. Then we discussed country music. Then we got into music in Louisiana. Then we got mm -hmm. to pop. We got the food in Louisiana. And finally, we got the Popeyes. I know. You see, it's a long, fun journey. My, <laughs> best, little... my best Louisiana story 
is I had to. I was traveling to go to work in uh, in in uh, uh, Florida in Miami. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. I have to stop for a moment because I get a just a really depressed feeling when I even ver- just peripherally remember working in Florida. Hold on. I know it was a tough time for you. Yeah. Anyway, so we were traveling down to that, and so we stopped in New Orleans, and we went to Paul Prudhomme's Chez Paul mm-hmm. uh, to get lunch. And we went in there, and I think we had some jambalaya, and we had this and that. It just, and it was wonderful. It was just one of the best meals I can say I've ever had anywhere. And finally, um, uh, uh, my girlfriend, was Xanthi at the time, says, uh, could I get a menu? And she said, fine. Yeah, you can have a menu to take. So they gave her a menu and said, uh, you know, would you like to uh, uh, have it signed by the chef? And she said, oh, yeah, I would love to have that. She said, well, he's downstairs in this trailer. And she said, oh, wow, we, we could meet me Paul Prudhomme. I said, come on, Paul Prudhomme probably, this is the height of his stuff. He had all the food, all the little seasonings and the this and the that. And the TV stuff. I said, he hasn't got time to take care of this place personally, you know? We go down to the basement, there's this trailer. We go in the trailer, and who's in there but Paul Prudhomme Mixing <laughs> mixing spices. Ah, okay. he's got a scale. He's measuring the spice, and I went. Uh, she said, "Oh, he's not going to be here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he signed it for her, and he, he was very nice to us, and you know, very cool. And then he went back to mixing his spices. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I think. Geography, I'm beginning to think, explains so much about everything. Yeah. And yeah, and so when you are, you know, I mean, let's face it, the South has had a lot of unrest. I mean, it's that darn Civil War kind of shook up the everything, and uh, the people. There was a time of great uh, sparsity. You know, like people yeah. who were living in mansions didn't have anything to eat, and uh, the the women. I've read a lot about Southern women during the Civil War, and Robert E. Lee uh, gave his wife a pistol when he put her in a wagon to get her out of the madness with the kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, "Use it to, you know, if if somebody comes at you, if a Union soldier comes at you." And I think he was implying with with less than noble intentions, if that soldier oh. kill it. Wow. And uh, <laughs> and if you find yourself in a bad 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 situation. You can kill yourself. I thought that was a pretty yeah. good husband. I mean, to look out for her, even though it would have meant great, great yeah. loss to him. Do you ever remember the worst food you ever got anywhere? Oh. Because hmm. I, I was trying to think of it, and I can't remember it. I, I'm, I'm sure there was something I had that was just god-awful. <laughs> steak of poivre. You had steak of poivre and got so sick as a dog. In the yeah, but it was good steak of poivre until I started <laughs> getting... Uh, literally dysentery, the tribe. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm in I'm in uh, Switzerland, lying in bed for three days because I can't. Re- well, I get out. I can get out of bed because I had to in order to go to the bathroom every five minutes. Yeah. And there was a point <laughs> at which just a hose. There was a point at which pure liquid was coming out, and I was dehydrating. Yeah. And it, it, I found out how how dysentery. As much as we make jokes about it, hey, fun diarrhea, okay, can kill you. Oh, it totally can. It, om- it almost killed me. You'll you be know? dehydrated. That's why liquid IV, have you ever tried those? I have that sodium thing, so I always have to keep abreast of all the, the uh, hydration preparations. Yeah. And there's Propel, which is kind of a commercial wording. And it, it, it is okay. But the liquid IV is really Well, we called a doctor, and he uh, uh, gave me one little pill that seized me up. He yeah. said, now go out <laughs> go out and get some food to eat. I felt better almost immediately as soon as I got this pill. But for three yeah. days, I'm like lying there going, I got to go to the bathroom. Then I go to the bathroom. And, I go to, and then I get up, and I almost hit the doorway to the bathroom 
and go, I got to go again. And I'm back mm -hmm. on. I mean, it's it, it's horrible. I, I didn't see how that people is. die from it. You know. Yeah, but hydration is key in a lot of. So so stuff. let's see. Let me trace this. We we started out basically with me asking you what was the first job you ever had. Mm -hmm. We then went to country music. We then went to how we loved country music. Then how I loved Cajun music. Okay. Queen Ida. Yeah, yeah, Queen Ida. She was on our show too, and yes. and and uh, you know all of these things. And uh, we wind up talking about diarrhea. I think that's wonderful, and I think that's where we should end this episode. Okay. Thank you we very, <laughs> thank you very much, Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you, Lori. Bye bye. Okay. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? Oh, you know what happens? This thing. Oh, I, I, look at me. I'm, see, you can see right through me. Oh, I'm like a ghost. See, these are things I just never check on, and I really should check on them, and I don't. I really don't. Uh, and uh, I should, uh, but here it is, and then I've got to go here, see. I get uh, uh, the uh, uh, this, and then I go to filters, and then I go to, see, this is a thing called our chroma key, and then what I have to do is bring this, there we go, now we're fine. And I go close, and this should save it, right? This should save it, but there we go. Am I okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, if it isn't one thing, it's another, okay? That thing should hold itself. I guess I better check it every night now. Anyway, uh, let me see here. There are some people waiting to come on here, and I guess I should uh, bring them on. Uh, Charlie Wallace is here, that's for darn sure. And uh, also uh, somebody we haven't seen in quite a while, if he comes on here. No, he went away, he went away. Uh, Trucker Steve uh, was here, and uh, he uh, he went. Oh, here he is now. There we go. It's Trucker Steve. Wait a minute. Where do we? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Okay. Trucker Steve, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, we just lost Charlie Wallace there. Oh, now we got Charlie Wallace. Right. I'm back. Okay, and uh, hello to Trucker Steve. How? Are you, uh, let's get a picture on you, Steve. Trying to. Huh? I'm trying to get a picture. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, just uh, click on. Uh, 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 what does he click on? Click on uh, videos, and it, there's a thing called, it says stop video, which is probably already stopped. And then you turn it on, and you should be okay. All right? Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, well, don't get to see oh, him, there he is. Okay, there he is. Hey, you're looking healthy there, guy. Yeah. Thank you. How's the kidney doing? Okay? Fine. Fine? It's good. Good? And you're, yeah. in, your, you're in your truck, right? Mm -hmm. Where are you? Twin Falls, Idaho. Twin Falls, Idaho. Oh, wow. So you're back to full trucking, back right? Back on the road. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, Fresno and then San Diego. Got a new job. Wow. Doing strictly uh, California. Oh, strictly in California? Yeah, sometimes Alberta and then down to California from there. But you don't live in California. You live in uh, Alberta. Ontario. Right? Huh? No, I live in Ontario. Ontario. Okay. London, Ontario. Anyway, that's uh, Trucker Steve, and he has a. Is your dog with you? No, he's here. He's on the floor. Oh, okay. Maybe we can see him later. Hey there, Charlie. How you doing? I'm doing okay. You doing fine? <laughs> yep. 
Are you happy with everything? Yeah, I just watched the uh, Young Sheldon series finale. So oh. I'm a little misty eyed. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course. It was meant to make you misty eyed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Felt you know, like an old friend's gone now. <laughs> you know, I've really gotten the like on that show is, uh, the, uh, what's her name, who plays Missy? Yeah. I think yeah. she's gotten to be a really good little actress. I mean, if you yep. look at some of the acting chops on those last episodes, she really she really knows how to evoke emotion. You know? Yeah, I hope she gets her own series. Yep, I do too. Uh, I, the guy who played Sheldon, I, I don't know if he's going to have much of a career. <laughs> You know, he was good when he was a kid. He, he was perfect for the part. When he, yeah, when he, was a, when he was a little kid, yeah. But he but grew up. she is just extraordinary. Yeah. And, and, and cute, too. Really adorable. Yeah. And going to grow up to be, a, I think, a rather ravishing woman, actually. Yep. Yeah. You know? So, oh, here we go. We got, we got Pam. Hi, Pam. <laughs> got to say okay. hello to Pam. She's yeah, she there too. every night, Jeff. You haven't gotten this down yet after after all this time. No. No. Let's, let's How you guys also, doing? Let's also get your camera uh, adjusted. Oh, yeah. Oh, there, there you go. we go. Okay. Now we're all ready to go. How are you doing, Alan? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. If you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, Trucker Steve, if you can let me know, we can exchange information, and I will be happy to take you to dinner. Yeah. Of course, you better find, you better find a restaurant that has a place to park a truck. Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of them. Uh, Especially well, in the San Francisco, there ain't a lot of parking for no, trucks. Is, I'm not in San Francisco. I'm in the East Bay. You know, you know, free, you know that down by Fremont, Newark, Union City. There's a lot of trucks. By parking. the way, if anybody listening to this program is in his neck of the woods, give him a call. He'll take you out to dinner. Okay, is that open to anybody? Absolutely. <laughs> Hello, Brian. Hello. Anyway, uh, so uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, Wednesday. And uh, uh, we there's nothing to report today. Mm. The trial's right. over here Thanks. in New York, at least uh, it, it, the the main part of the trial. Now it goes to the jury, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if uh, we can refer to him as a felon. <laughs> Which, of course, we all know it's a kangaroo court. Yep. Right. What, so does, where, does that we, mean they convict him of being a kangaroo? Yeah, I don't know. Where do they get? Where do they ever get that term, kangaroo court? I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean. I bet he doesn't know either. He doesn't know either. He has no idea. Witch hunt is another one of the ones he likes to use. Yes. yes. Kangaroo court. You know, witch hunt is kind of true. He's a witch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, we're uh, we've got a pretty uh, you know it's it's pretty pretty a uh, pretty amazing little trial. But I was mentioning to Marjorie and uh, not Marjorie, but to uh, Lori Thompson on tonight that you know the terrible thing is that we have kind of forgotten other things going on in the world because this trial has sucked so much oxygen out of the uh, uh, out of the uh, uh, air that you know we forget that for instance we, we we're not talking about gaza right now we're not talking about uh uh ukraine as an example two we are very about horrible gaza. things which are far more important than the damn trump trial but he has sucked so much oxygen out of the room mm -hmm. that there's no room left for any of those other things and i as i also said to to uh, laurie and it's true Americans seem to have a really bad um, ability at, uh, at uh, processing more than one thing at a time, okay? You have your hand up there, Charlie? Yep, the term kangaroo court came about to describe frontier judges 
who would hop from one town to another with little regard of for making fair rulings. All they wanted to do was see as many, get as many trials in as possible. And this applies how to the judge here in New York City who sits in the same room every day? <laughs> yep. That's what I mean. He has no idea what it means. Yeah, yep. he no, has no idea what it means. So something you would have liked in the news, Alex, is some of the, the UK countries are... Um, or, or around there, that that, that that part of the world are accepting Palestine as a, as a uh, you know their own sovereign state. Well, no, they're they're talking about a cause, yeah. you know, uh, recognizing the Palestinians as a state. I, uh, I, you know, yeah. why not? Oh, you, you know, know, I mean, they should, of course, of course. You know, you, you you can be you know for or against the Palestinians, but they should have their own statehood. Oh, but no, they're they're horrible, terrible people, and you can't give them a country of their own. How dare you? Uh, the World Court, which I never heard of, or something like that. It's a kangaroo court, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, really. Put out no, put out a put out a thing uh, uh, with a uh, an indictment. With, indictment with, uh, against uh, 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 yes. Netanyahu and yep. the and Hamas. Right, right, and both. So what are they going to do if they catch them? Where are they going to What are they going to try them up? Well, that means basically that means that the Netanyahu can't leave Israel because anywhere else he could be put under arrest. Yep. Somebody in that country, wherever he's at, has got to enforce it. But yeah. In theory, but you're right. I'll tell you the story that made me so happy. Let me see if I can find it here because I've got to I got to find it for you. Because this is a story that just, you know, there are a lot of times there are stories that don't mean anything to me. But then this one seemed to really mean something to me. Let me see here. Well, oh, there it is. Okay. Are you ready for this? This made me so happy. It made my day today. I, I had a smile on my face for the rest of the day. Fast rising seas could swamp septic systems in parts of the south. <laughs> it seems as though the 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 you know the what do you call it the fast rising seas are creating a situation in which septic systems are overflowing in the in most of the southern states and also in the Gulf Coast states like Texas. Louisiana yep. and Florida. So, but there's no climate change. There's yeah. No... Well, we always knew they were full of shit. So you know this. Uh... <laughs> well, what, they they ought to uh, drain Lake Okeechobee and use that as the uh, as the as the pit to start with. Absolutely. In Florida. Why not? That's a good start. You know. Uh, but anyway, so uh, th 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 but that's all I got. So uh, have a nice night, everybody, and I'll see you later. <clears throat> No, 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 wait. I never knew what the chroma key was for. What? I never knew what a chroma key was for. You well, readjusted chroma key your... is essentially, uh, you have it, believe it or not, on your... Oh, yeah, I, I've seen that. I've just never known a, a use well, for it. what it, it does just... is it, you take a background. Like, for instance, let me see if I can, uh, if I could take my background off here. Let me see here. Uh, I gotta go here, and then I gotta go here, and if you may notice, um, here's my background, as you see this background here. Right. But that's not really there. Right. Okay, what is really there? Oh, well, wait a minute, I can't do it. I can't, you took yourself off. It I can't back. do it. Well, wait a minute, maybe I can do it by taking to going to none. There we go. Okay. Yeah. And just to see, we just see a green screen. And what screen. happens is, is that when I uh, initiate the green screen, it cuts a key around anything that isn't green. Mm. Around, in other words, if it's green, it doesn't show up. Right. So I can't wear anything green. Mm hmm all right. In fact, I don't have anything on me right now that's green. And that's why some of your your waters and stuff look like you're not yeah, holding it. Exactly, yeah. like lime flavors or whatever. Right. So, and then uh -huh. when I add the background, you get this, or you get this, or you get Ooh. this. 
or you get this. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. right. uh, but you can do that with uh, with what you when you want to put a background, you know, on your picture on Zoom. Yeah. It's really kind of creating a chroma key, but it's an artificial chroma key. I, I'm going to look it up after the show to get a. I, I never heard anybody use it. Uh, and uh, I, I watched name? you uh, use uh, it a few you're, minutes you're ago. Good, your good pal uh, uh, uses it all the time. My good Same. pal, Phil Meyer? Yeah. Don't say his name. Don't say his name three times. Uh oh. Like Beetlejuice, huh? Yeah. But he's had uh, a chroma key. And, uh, you know, Trucker Steve isn't really in his truck. That's a chroma key. He's really. <laughs> you know. Um, He's really in his bathroom. Yeah, but if it, all of you, any of you, want to go to your uh, your Zoom, and then you go to uh, uh, the part that goes under video, it goes uh, uh, virtual yeah. background. What you do is you just simply can not, you you can use any background. Like let me look. Let me take this down. Here's the, that's the green screen. Okay, Hi. but uh, I can take this and I can say I don't have a green screen and look at what it does. Yeah. See, so you kind of have an automatic green screen. Right. So I just changed mine, but these are just settings in Zoom. Hmm? They don't, I don't I don't have a green screen now. I'm just I have not a bad looking. The trouble yeah, that I don't like I have about a green screen. There's that. Then I bring this up. And there we go. Right. See? Wow, that's clever, boy. You gotta be a mover. You can move. You can move a whole room with one hand. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. The background. only thing is, the only thing it's a it's a green screen and it's on a platform. It's a thing that unrolls I've seen them. and it has a bottom on it and it stands there all by itself and it's uh, very good. It, it it's not that expensive either, but <laughs> but. Every time I'm not doing the show on the weekends, I got to take it and move it to the back so it's not in the way. And that's the only you know, problem with it. I like these backgrounds, but when you get out of the picture, your your part of you moves. You you can lose the sight of your face and yeah, stuff. They do a pretty good job of creating a chroma key, an artificial chroma key. Okay. Okay. But that's cool. that's Thanks for the explanation. Good example of what we're talking about. I've seen it, never knew what it did, and I, but I watched you do it right before the show. Yeah, yeah, well, it's because I had a problem with it because what happened was uh, I have a, uh, uh, that, that was my uh, chroma key f for uh, the, um, for just my camera, okay? And so I have to adjust it, and I, it went out of adjustment. As you saw, it looked like I was a ghost. So I had to tighten up the chroma key, and then it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another boring explanation on this show, okay? <laughs> Eight up five minutes. You know, some of the people yeah. out in, in listening land might not have known that either. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Got the air conditioner on tonight. Me too. Because <laughs> it gets hot in here. Yep. I bet even Brian has his on. What is that? Zyrtec? My kind of day. Zyrtec D. What is that? Is that for uh, allergies? Yeah, allergies. Is it, bad, is out? Is it bad out there? Yeah, it's been really bad lately. And yes. Well, I grew it gets up in to my level, it's bad. I, I, I rarely get really bad allergies, but today it was really bad. I suddenly realized I got color in my face. Yep. I just, I just you're going outside shirt. and walking with Marjorie. I took a short That's walk right. yesterday, and I've got my face is red now. <laughs> you got to put sunscreen on. No, I don't. Be careful with that skin cancer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. No, I've had, <clears throat> I've had terrible sunburns in my lifetime. Never got skin cancer. <laughs> well, yeah. The I'm kids who lay out on the beach as youngsters are the ones I'm that I'm not that fair a person, you know. We know that. Yeah. My friend just got diagnosed. He had some little red spot forever, and then all of a sudden it started making a rash. And so what the doctor said, oh, yeah, you have some skin cancer. It's not spreading or anything. We'll just zap it out. And then he has tattooed arms, and then he's got to get it touched down. <laughs> wow. <coughs> wow. 
Wow. So you had to have, uh, you had skin cancer? No, my friend. My friend just got diagnosed last week. Oh, I see. And so what? He just had a little spot. Like I said, he had like a little red spot forever. And then they laser it away, don't they? Yeah, they just blast it away and then touch up his tattoos. They laser it away and it goes away. Okay. That's good. Anybody else have interesting news? There's not that much happening. No. Hmm. Yeah. You know. I, I I thought maybe sometime in this past couple of days, Marjorie Trash Can Green would try and screw something up with OAC again. Or well, I went back and I saw that video of her arguing with those people in Congress. Man, oh, that yes, was good. cool. Cat fight. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, but absolutely. Ocasio Cortez really handed it to her. She held her own. That's that for and sure. The black woman that she was fighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you just don't start a fight with a black woman. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wrong. I learned my lesson years ago. It really? <laughs> His mother. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. You know, <laughs> you know that head bob that they do. Yeah. But uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene took her on, and I went, what? You know. Are oh, you yeah. kidding me? Uh, I mean, Congress isn't supposed to be like that. All right. Hey, we got a holiday weekend coming up. Is anybody doing anything extraordinary? No. No. What holiday? This is the most exciting. Memorial week. Day. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. Monday, right? It's Monday. Yeah, I'm going to do my little show on Monday anyway. Yep. Oh, mainly good. Cause, mainly because I have no life. Me either. <laughs> Is yeah, it uh, uh, Indianapolis 500? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. They, they, oh, they have, uh, on, uh, F1, oh, yeah. F1's Memorial. in Monaco. F1's in Monaco, so it's uh, early starts, like 5 and 6 a.m. to watch uh, live races. Oh, well, the one in Monaco, you mean? Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, Monaco Grand Prix, yeah. That one actually goes through the streets of Monaco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the week before they have Amelia, and that one is like the race circuit, and then they go into the streets in uh, Monaco. But no, it's almost like they wanted to have something to drag people there in the way of a race or something. And they went, yeah, but we're not big enough to have a race. Well, then we'll just have a race on the roads. Yeah. And I think they even go up in the 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 hills, don't they, too? What was that? They have them go up into the hills as well. Mm. You have these, a little bit. You have these yeah. three and they go roads. through the big tunnel, and they have that really sharp turn. And the cars have been growing so much that now they're having a hard time going around those corners. Well, I know yeah. that. I know that tunnel. I've gone through that tunnel. Mm. Uh, but you've got also these three roads. There's the there and there's the Bosch Corniche, and there's another Corniche. There are three Corniches, and the, mm. there's one at the bottom, one in the mm. middle, and one at the top. And mm. you could travel any of those when you're going through the south of france you know uh they do a they do a grand prix style race through long beach california every year on the streets of long beach oh in indy indy cars yeah yeah oh that, that's not what they use in monaco no monaco's the f1 oh okay f formula one yeah formula one's the formula one but they did las vegas last year so do you like uh, do you like watching uh, car races, uh, Ryan? I know you're a car fan. Yes. Yeah. I love. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then when I uh, when I got the McLaren, then I really got into it. So because mm. McLaren has a team, so it's nice to root for somebody that you have yeah. In, so. Yeah. Yeah. But although on that wall in your house you have a big Ferrari sign. I know. Mm. Yeah. My. So my, my stepfather was really into F1 racing and stuff like that. So. so is that how you got into it? Uh, I watched it a little bit, but I wasn't into it. And then when um, when I got the McLaren, then I started watching. And they had a show called Drive to Survive, the one on Netflix. Yeah. And that sort of got really the whole U.S. market to start watching F1 stuff. And it just happened to be the same time I got the McLaren. Uh, so, yeah, then I got really into it. And then we met uh, one of the racers, Lando Norris, a real popular guy. He just won the, the one a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, so, and Adrian gets up early, she'll watch it with me, so that's fun. Does she like watching car racing? Her? She watches, like, five minutes, and then she starts looking at her iPad. So, but she stays with me, so that's important. <laughs> Did you ever race one of your cars? Every day when he goes to load, I... No, I'm talking about that. I, I want to track my car, but then it gets into, you know, I can't afford if something happens to it, so... <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, there's a there's a few guys that track their cars. They have a McLaren Day at Sonoma Raceway, and they they have some really expensive cars. So I may do that one time. Mm-hmm. So you just follow a group through the corners and stuff like that. Nothing big. So I may do that one time with this car. Well, I used to tell it, it, it the the handling and performance of this car is just unbelievable. Well, I so you know crazy. I went out one day and I needed a new car, so we went into a dealership. And there was this car that I liked. It looked really nice. And it happened to be a Z300. Uh, uh, at that time, I think they were still Datsuns, but I can't still remember. Still Datsuns. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, it was, a, it was Z300. And uh, so I, I, I bought it, right? I could afford it. I had a lot of fuck you money back in those days. And I went, okay, let's buy it. And uh, we paid. Uh, we actually paid cash for it. It was twenty nine thousand dollars. Now, again, you don't think that's a lot of money, but back then, that was a lot of money put out for a for a car. Mm-hmm. So I buy this thing. I just bought it because it looked good, and it, the top came off, and it, I could on a nice day I could go drive up the. Your hair cinema. flowing? Was your hair flowing? In My the hair wind was flowing, oddly enough, in mm-hmm. those days. So anyway, uh, uh, so I buy this car. Now I suddenly notice something I never noticed with any other car I ever owned. It's As I drive mark. by some kids on the highway, they'd honk and go. <laughs> no. And I went. And, and the pretty girls would say, stop, <clears throat> give us a ride. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is that I, in my whole, my whole life, I never had a car that people gave me that kind of look. You know, and went, boy, are you cool. You've got that. You know, I went, wow. Imagine if you were in a Ferrari. You know, yeah, the, kid, the kids here always want you to rev it up and stuff like that. Yeah, so. <laughs> makes a lot of noise. Yeah, what my, do you want the, first? The, the, uh, the, the, the Nissan did not. It was a Nissan by the time I bought it. No, they were quiet. Uh, they were quiet, yeah. yeah. Before that, I had a Mar- Mazda RX-7. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Brian? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. I told you I lost a race on 280. We were going about 70, I guess, 75. And we both jumped on it, and he left me. I thought I was hot in my 5.0 Mustang convertible. But that, that rotary motor well, It had a, really a good. Wonk, the Wankel engine, which was a rotary Winkle. engine. Winkle. Yep. Wankel. I thought it was pronounced Wankel. Wankel. Okay. I owned one, damn it. I know why you, why you pronounce it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it the rotary engine was just... You, you, and you didn't hear it a lot. It was very quiet, very quiet mm-hmm. engine. So you couldn't really rev it, you know. It was impossible to rev. One of my neighbors has a 300Z that he keeps in the garage. It's his baby. And the, he paid, I don't know, he bought it brand new, and he paid somewhere around what you said, around 30000 And uh, he's been offered a lot more for it because it's all original. Well, I'll tell you what the worst thing was about the uh, about the uh, uh, RX-7. I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the Nissan Z300 was it had a skirt on the front of it. And every time I would go into like a parking lot at a grocery store and they had those, you know, those little bumper oh. things there, mm-hmm. it yep, would get it hooked great. on it. Yeah. And eventually yep. every now and then, every year I'd have to buy a new a bumper, you know, because those things kept ripping off. I bet off your McLaren on. is pretty. It's pretty loaded. No, I don't get close to those things. No, no but my I had a I had a um, LS 460L, the Lexus big Lexus, and I had it lowered with 22s and and yeah, that I that things those things have ripped off a couple of my bumpers. I had to replace. Them really bad. Yeah, but now so also they're, they're tire stop. Right? Lexus had a sports yeah. car. Am I right about that? It was the. Uh, what was it? The, Lexus had a sports car. Yeah, they have a yeah, they have a couple. Yeah, but no, what 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 was it? It was called 
All I know is everybody I knew at these computer companies wanted one. Oh, no, you're talking about the NSX, right? The NSX. Yeah. NSX, yeah, and those things are going for big money now. Really? It was a sweet car, and it was a sweet ride. The worst ride yeah. I ever had, though, was a, uh, um, a not, not, the, not the Ferrari, but the uh, El Diablo. Uh, yeah, a Lamborghini. Lamborghini El Diablo. I never rode in a worse car in my life. <laughs> I had, if I didn't have hemorrhoids before I went to Lake Tahoe in one of those things, I had them when I got back. <laughs> the NSX, the big thing with the NSX is it had racing technology and all the suspension. So back then, 92, 90 to 96 or something, mm -hmm. um, I almost bought one, but I couldn't fit in it because my legs had <laughs> too long. <laughs> my knee was in between the shifter and the steering wheel. So I, I didn't get it. But, um, really? Those were like 30000 at that time after after they sort of came down depreciated. Uh, but. But after 10 years, I mean, that that technology for the suspension was the best. So it's like re well, Honda uh, racing uh, stuff. Oh, oh, I had a Mazda RX-7. Was that considered a sports car? Yeah. 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 But not like an RX-7. Uh, the 300Z, rather. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I had a, I had one of the original Mustangs. You mm, know. Really? Oh. But that wasn't really a sports car. You had a back <clears> seat and everything like that. It didn't. It, it looked like a sports car. That was what was so great about it, but it didn't have any of the uh, pedigree, shall we say, that a sports car has. Mm. Anybody? What year was that one? one? What? What year was that Mustang yet? The Mustang was 19, let's see, I got out of, when I get out of the Navy, I, I was in the Navy. God, I'm trying to remember now. When did I get out of the Navy? I can't remember. Didn't they come out in 64? 60, well, 64 and a half was I, the Okay, first it was year. a year after the first year. It was the 65. Yeah, I just gotten out of the Navy, and that was uh, in 1965. And I, I needed a car. I didn't have a car at that point, a decent car at that point. So we... Well, was uh, it just like a base model? Well, I'll tell you, with the, with the original Mustangs, the base model was pretty much every model, if I remember correctly. Right. Right. Well, they had they had a inline six, and then they had the V8s. Yeah. So either either had one of those. And I think then, I got a V. I got a, a inline six because I wanted the I uh, the eights ate up too much gas. You know. Didn't the performance? And it was only like twenty five cents a gallon back then. Yes. <laughs> didn't the performance Mustangs come out in the early seventies, like the GT and stuff like that? Well, the, the Shelby, <coughs> yeah. Well, Shelby, yeah. Shelby, that was in the kind 70s. of took Mustangs and made him into his own car. You know? Yeah, Carroll Shelby. Yeah, Carroll Shelby. Yeah. yeah, I had many Mustangs in high school, for about five or six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we're buying them for thirty-five hundred dollars. I also oh. had a Volkswagen uh, Carmen Ghia. Mm -hmm. I guess now that I say I didn't buy sports cars, I bought cars that were sporty. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about the Mustang is it's got a big back seat in it. Yeah. If you're going, if you're going to high school, yeah, but they're not handy. Are you seen the new ones? They got like no leg room in the back. Seat. Yeah. None. Nobody buys them for their back seat nowadays. <laughs> they buy them for the performance car. I rode an electric one recently. Well, they get they have a lot of get up and go. Oh, electric cars have yeah. real get up and go. I, I know, I know. I mean, I've been I've been in Teslas because they're around here, but I'd never been in the electric Mustang. But it it's not as quick as the Tesla, or as nice as the Tesla. But boy, I got to tell you, I was pretty impressed. This is from a guy that drives an Econoline E150. That when you floor it, Brian's got pictures of it. When you floor the damn thing, it takes you 22 minutes to get up to freeway speed. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, but. I actually opted. I, I could have got a, a a V6, and I opted for the V8, even though gas mileage was a little bit worse. But it's a big, heavy vehicle, and you need a V8 for it. So, yeah. Now you can't get them in that. Now they're sixes and fours and turbos and. Anybody else here ever own a sports car? Tony, you look like I got a sporting, one. You have a sports car. Yeah, I showed you a picture of it. Remember. Yeah, but oh, I, outside my 
outside my house. Yeah, but I have an '86 Corvette. Oh wow! Yes, I remember that. Yeah. What a beautiful car that was. Uh, my friend uh, Buddy Love owned. I don't know if he still has it. He had a Corvette. He had a real good Corvette, but I think it was earlier than that. I think it was some. It was one of the six. Was sixty Corvettes. Out back in the 60s yeah you know the stingray by now they're up to generation number eight i got a c4 yeah but th these were stingrays back then yeah and, and man, well, they still make the stingrays now yeah okay but it, but in the, in those days it was a gorgeous car just they're, a, they're nice until you get into get into a severe accident they splinter all over the place and i've oh, seen fiberglass I've, I've seen my fair share of accidents that have evolved Corvette stingrays. That they just well, you, know. you say splinter because they are they're fiber. It's a fiberglass body. body. Yeah. yeah. But what what was the advantage to the fiberglass body, Brian? Weight. Big weight. weight. Yeah, weight. And they don't rust. And they what? They don't rust. Yeah. They don't rust. And they don't rust. Yeah. But they splinter. <laughs> so. <laughs> But didn't they used to, when they had to fix it, if it got into an accident or something, didn't they just use glue to put it back together again or some kind it's of... It's resin and uh, yeah. fiberglass mesh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice car. If I was getting a sports car, I would get that. I only had one sports car. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. What was the worst car in the world? I was always told it was the Fiat. It was a bunch of them. <laughs> I have Tony's sports car right here. It's a little Mustang. <laughs> oh, I got it. I, I had the big wheel 78X. Did you? <laughs> I didn't collect it. It's a, it says LAPV on it. The only, the, only car, the only sports car that Tony ever owned was a Hot Wheel. Yeah, I right. had that too, yeah. <laughs> that was the case. Don't touch it. Don't bend it. <laughs> Boy. Mm. This one, the doors open and... The tires move, and you these prizes are worth money nowadays. Yeah. Oh, they... oh my God! Really? I was just. Who, who, who? All of a sudden, everybody's quiet. Oh. Well, well, I used to have a bunch of cars, and you? you guys probably never had. They were all sobs. <laughs> Little two strokes. Yeah. Mix oil. Did you get the two strokers? No, you mix really? the oil with them. No, there were four. Bing, 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 bing. Turbo. With them. Very we used to have a customer that did that. You come in and get a little bit of gas, and you take a little oil and dump that in the gas tank, and make sure it was mixed right. Mm -hmm. Shake the car a little bit, make yeah. sure it was shook up. Then it would Is go down the road car? smoking away. <laughs> yeah. Like the a little motorcycle. The new sauce. Two cylinder. Yeah, the new sobs are, 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 don't use that, and they still smoke. Well, I had always heard terrible things about Fiat's. Somebody said Fiat stands for Fix It Again, Tony. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, and that they mm. were always breaking down. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't believe people when they said this until I went to Italy, and I'm driving down the road in Italy, and about every five miles there's a sign saying Fiat Repair Shop one mile and this is like every one. every five miles i used, i had a fiat 850 coupe yeah. i worked on it all the time rewired the whole damn thing a couple times because it burned up <laughs> <laughs> now you do know that if you go to spain i don't know if this is so anymore but in the days when i used to go to spain a lot fiat had a car in Spain, but in Spain you couldn't have a, a company from another country b do things in Spain without having a Spanish partner. And so in Spain, the Fiat was a Seat. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I but remember something It was the same like exact that. car, but they had you know American ownership. Spain. Mm. Oh, everything. Different companies. You buy a Chevrolet and be Chevrolet of Spain, you know. So. Well, Fiat, I I always thought of them as a small car company, but for a while they owned Chrysler. Did the they other own, way around. Did oh, they, sorry. Who did you? What did what did you say, uh, Kevin? Chrysler owned Fiat. Oh. Chrysler owned Fiat. It was the other way around. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got it wrong. 
It's what? happened Drink. before. That. No big deal. <laughs> Drink. Drink. Everybody have a drink? Yeah, really, I got it wrong. Yeah, so. and then they uh, then they had the Daimler, uh, Daimler Chrysler. Daimler bought up Chrysler. And who's Daimler? What 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 did they do in Europe? I never heard of them before they bought up Chrysler. Uh, what the hell? They were. Uh, I, I mean, want to say they, they were do trucks truck too. Company. They build yeah, freight they liners. A truck company, yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, okay. We yeah. have two semi truck drivers here. Uh, uh, of course, we've got uh, trucker Steve, and we've got Kevin, who was. Tr you're not a truck driver anymore, are you? No. You don't do it. He's a door gave up my license a couple of months ago. Oh, what? No. Oh, you lost. You took. Gave up. Your I life. finally gave it up. Why? Just didn't need it, right? Yeah, they wanted me to take all kinds of other tests. I had my TSA and my <laughs> Homeland Security all that shit coming up, and I just decided I don't need it anymore. So, yeah. do you have that kind of stuff up in Canada, or do you have to worry? Do you have to take, have too many different licenses and things like that to drive a truck? In, uh, and do you have to? Have I only have a CDL. That's it. Well, if he had hazmat, yeah, he would have to. But to but, you, uh, you don't you don't haul hazmat, do you? You get that through the company. It's just a. Uh, Dangerous yeah. good card. Yeah, see, I would have to maintain all that myself, and it's quite costly. And if I don't use it, why would I? I did for a while. I, you know, I, I retired nine years ago, and the company paid for all that stuff, and it was quite expensive. <clears throat> and uh, I did it for, I think, five years or two cycles. And I said, "Why am I doing this?" But but your your truck is out of out of Canada. So when you come into the United States, do you have to have any special licenses and stuff to run it through the United States, or do you just? Oh uh, uh, yeah, it comes with a permit book. A what? Every state you have what? to have a permit, basically. Every state to run it through. Wow. Pretty much. Permit yeah. to operate, yeah. Well, how do you do that, though? I mean, how, you know, how, you got to order. You got to order them through the DOT, uh, through. Uh, to order their their permits, like alcohol permits, hazmat permits, yeah, you know, road like, tax. Depending on what you're hauling, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, do, do you have to have it for? There's everything. a lot of money involved. Like a friend of mine knows an owner operator who made three hundred thirty thousand dollars, and he took home one hundred and thirty. All the rest of the money was expenses for the truck and, and taxes. Wow. Wow. So it's expensive to be an owner operator, especially now with California, the fuel prices. Yeah. And if you're in California, it's even worse. Why is it There's worse? drivers <laughs> that won't even come to California anymore. Really? Yep. Yep. Because of emissions. Emissions is the worst in California, and they're getting worse. But you say you're going yeah, through California, yeah. right, trucker Steve? Uh, we have to put deep, deaf fluid in the truck, and they have to have this regen system which basically burns the exhaust recirculate it so you don't get that black smoke out of the pipe exhaust pipes like they used to wow you're missing so much of a sticker mm -hmm. on your valve cover your emission sticker they can shut you down really yep mm -hmm. so it's got to be pretty expensive to be a truck driver to have your own business oh it's huge it's huge yeah, it's a lot of expense. You pay road tax in every state. You're better off uh, okay, so paying something. profits. You Let me in. ask you this, plain and simple. Do you make a decent profit? If, well, I've never been an owner-operator. So yeah, you got to be, oh, be working I, for somebody. I, oh, so you, yeah. you drive other people's trucks? Yeah, I don't own the truck, no. That's the best no. way to do it. That's <laughs> the way to do it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just get paid by the mileage to go take something and deliver it someplace and get it back. And the owner, mm -hmm. what does the owner get out of it? I mean, is there enough profit for him? There must be. Well, yeah, they get their share and driver gets paid and yeah. all expenses, fuel. Like these trucks, you fuel them up about every two to three days, depending how big your tanks are. Yeah, there's a brake line where you can... Either you either got to go super big or just keep it real small. You can't go in the middle, otherwise you won't make money. You got to you got to have 
thousands of trucks on the road or just one or two and do it yourself? It seems like. There's companies right now that are just going under because the fuel prices are just so much that, like, there's one company here in, in Canada and Ontario, Pride Logistics. They were, before COVID, they had a $2 billion profit. They were a rather large company. Now they're two billion in the hole, and they're in bankruptcy. Wow! Wow! Who will kill you? Yep. But I, want, I should ask both of you because both of you are truck drivers. Mm -hmm. I, that would drive me nutty being a truck driver. I couldn't do it. But did you seem to enjoy it, Kevin? And you, you obviously, you like it, uh, uh, trucker Steve, because it's been, it's been your life. You know, except for that time when you were ill and had to get better. But outside of that, this has been pretty much your life, hasn't it? Well, since I was 25, yeah, I'm 49 now. And how about you? How so, about you, Kevin? How, how old? Almost, when, I almost 24 for, years ago. Uh, I did it for 41 years. I started in 78 oh. and finished in basically 2015. But you liked it, didn't you? Yeah, I always said it's the best job because it's the only one of the only jobs that you can walk into your boss's, you know, into work, and the first thing your boss says is, "Get the hell out of here." <laughs> <laughs> get in your truck and get out of here. Oh boy! I know. I say, "Okay, bye. See you tonight." I notice. And then when you I, get home, yeah. you're leaving. Bye. <laughs> I noticed that I you think... just brought in a guest, didn't you? No. 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 Why? Why are you I, saying I think no? The worst thing about truck. I think the worst thing about trucking are all the drivers. Since I drive to Lodi three days a week, people still cut them off and up to the light. They'll they'll cut in yeah. front of them. Like you know, they see like Livermore. There's a couple lights to go through, and there's a truck coming, and the person will get in front of them just to be like first in line there, you know. And that that you just cut off like you know twenty feet of stopping distance for that guy. And, man, I, I, As that I, truck I, is loaded, that's a lot of weight to try and stop. Now, what, what I've heard, though, also, there is an advantage that some women like to flash truck drivers. <laughs> that's the best part. Is that true? That's the best part. Man. It used that's to be really Kevin good. That's why Kevin went into it. It used I flash to be, yeah. all the time. What do you mean it used yeah. to be? Why isn't it, why isn't it now? Now I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, Steve could tell you more about nowadays, but back in the day, oh, all the time. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe what people do while they're driving. You would not mm -hmm. believe it. And, and, and to the benefit of t uh, t uh, truck drivers then, huh? Not necessarily. Just to the benefit of them, each other. And then all yeah, of a sudden they realize that truck drivers are watching. Yeah. Is it, is it b bad in your estimation, uh, Trucker Steve? Uh, was there a lot of the flashing going on? I have been mooned once before. Uh it's, this was near Edmonton. A girl <laughs> dropped her pants and just stuck her pressed ham up against the window. I just had to lift out. I ain't, I ain't just talking about hams. I'm talking about oh. dudes doing themselves. I'm talking about girls doing girls, girls doing boys. Uh -oh. You wouldn't believe I the stuff at, they do. I was south of Detroit yeah. one time <laughs> Stop. going to uh, yeah. Indianapolis, I think. And a guy was jerking off in his driver's seat. Mm -hmm. By the oh. way, by the way, we have well, young, I we have young listeners. Yeah, I know that's why involved now. No, no, it's okay. So we probably mute, have mute. to move on to other discussions. Uh, see, there's a lot going on. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I failed you ask. Will, uh, going back to the traffic stuff, though, I, I I know that for a fact that Steve probably goes through hell with these other guys on the road nowadays because they give a truck driver's license to just about anybody. I can imagine what it's like nowadays. I wouldn't want to That's be on in California. Uh, there's a lot Anywhere, of bad the western drivers states. I, I see them going over the hills <laughs> in Shasta and stuff like that, and then I look and I go, "How the hell did you get a license, dude?" And they yump, they jump out into the fast lane well, and they jump out into the high dollar lane and they stop everybody on the road. And they got governors on their trucks and they cannot go any faster than about 55 miles an hour. They still jump out there loaded. And they stop everybody, and then they're down to 40 miles an hour, and they know they can't pass that truck, but they still do it. Yeah. And then they wonder why people were pissed at truckers. All yeah, the they're more. Well, let me ask you this: What's the story on electric trucks? Are they a Ugh. reality or yeah, are get they me started? Yes. yes. They might be good for local work, but I wouldn't use them for a long haul. 
But you know, the thing I was thinking of, can't they carry a rather large battery if they have to? Because they have they've to. got mm -hmm. you've got the, the whole bottom of the truck is battery. Yeah. yeah. And how far can it go on one charge? Yeah, they can't even well, they claim a Tesla can go 500 miles on a charge. Wow. But then you wow. got to stop for like an hour or two to charge it up again? Probably. Uh, uh, but the guy I talked to who drives yeah, one, sure. the guy who I talked to drives one, and he said it's unbelievable. He says the torque and everything to pull that thing. And they have, yep. I've, That's a Frito Lay truck. I've seen. Is that a Frito Lay truck? No, no. The, the yellow Frito Lay, this is the first one I saw white. But yeah, I've seen the Frito Lay. Like I see them like once a week on my drives. Wait, wait, why do yeah, you call I've seen them, them out there too. Why do you call them Frito Lay? Do they look like uh, potato they, chips? No, they were hauling potato chips. Oh, potato. Yeah. 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 So they haul light loads. Yeah, but the guy, the guy's really impressed by it, and he said it's it's definitely coming. So, what was he hauling? Uh, he wasn't hauling anything. No, yeah. that's, that's why. Well, but still, oh, you air. know, I mean, it, it's yeah. got to be, it's got to take up a lot of uh, uh, time to, you know, charge those things. And for a truck driver, you like to be on the road, right? But you also got to remember they got uh, limited hours of service now to be on the road. So you they probably run up 500 hours or 500. Uh, you get sleep you know, while it's charging. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You, sleep you go 500 charging. miles, you're probably out of hours anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe when you run out of hours nowadays, you pull over on the side of the road and you, you're stuck where you are. Yeah. If your dispatcher ain't good about it and you're not good about it. I don't think this hours. whole going to electric is going to exactly work. I, I agree. The thing with I'm you. worried about <clears throat> is autonomous trucks like they're talking about. The autonomous one, yeah. That's yeah, about. no driver. Yeah, yeah. No but driver. I, I don't think they should. I, I, they still claim they have to have a driver, but what. When it gets to the point where they don't want a driver in it, just a truck driving on the road, who's going to chain the tires when it's trying to climb Donner Pass yep. or Shasta? Yeah. yeah. Who's going to open the doors when it backs into a dock? Who's going to walk the bill of lading to the shipping office? Who's going to do a tire you know, thump every 50? Who's going to do a tire pump thump every 150 miles or whatever? Wait, explain you a know. tire thump. Yeah, I feel like it's like when, well, when you're when you're hauling hazardous materials, thumb. you're supposed to check your tires every 150 miles. And how do you check them by thumping them? You get out, you, <laughs> you walk around, around you bang them with a <laughs> stick, basically. See, these are things <laughs> none of us know because we don't no, drive no trucks. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was a way to take in a lunch break. <laughs> no, have you ever seen a guy walking around a truck with a with a baseball bat looking no. thing? He, he's That's whacking his tires. <laughs> and what are you listening thumb. for? What are you listening Yeah, what for? does that tell you? It tells you your tires are low or, or flat. Oh, oh, really? If it bounces nice. off quick, if you hit the tire and it bounces off quick, your pressure is good. But if, if you hit it and it kind of like a soft side, yeah. it might have a flat. Or low air. Wow. Uh, yes, Tony. When you when you see a guy get out of a truck in New York with a bat, that means it's a gangster. He's taking over the truck. <laughs> They're doing good, fellas. Get out. Uh, yeah, he said because you may you may he grabs the guy's ID. Oh, you can have he grabs it. the guy's ID and says you may think you know who I am, but I know who. But you I know are. who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you can you have cut it. me yeah. off. Yeah. The interesting thing was. When you asked Kevin the question, he was trying to explain the tire thumping. Yeah. Tony was talking the whole time. Yeah. So nobody could hear Kevin. That's nice. Yeah. But anyway, so. Uh, I well, couldn't we'll, understand the first part of what Kevin had to say. I always enjoy programs when we do something and I <laughs> learn stuff I never knew before. Yeah. And I'm glad that at 84. I have a few years left in my life, but before I go, I've learned what yeah. tire thumping is. I'm a, there you go. You know, I can take that. Next, to next, you can learn how to drain your mud flaps. What? Oh, what? Why drain would, your mud flaps. Drain your mud flaps. That sounds like that some. Kind that's of, when you got to piss real bad and you jump oh, out on the side oh, of the freeway. <laughs> oh. That's exactly how it sounded. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Drain get out and drain my mud flaps. flaps. Yeah, yeah. 
when we stop him, for Kevin, we gotta go to the bathroom, bro. It's a diamond down the block. No, we go right here. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I like the cars that have these giant. One good thing about twenty-two and a half inch tires. These giant metal <laughs> testicles hanging on the back of them. I like that. So, no, uh, trucks were never anything I thought about owning. I never thought about owning a truck. You know. I owned a company for about, I don't know, three or four, well, six months until my wife divorced me. Oh. And then I gave it to her. And she ruined <laughs> oh, really? it. And she ruined it. What, what did but you, we'll, were you selling? We'll get away from that subject. Were you selling trucks? No. Oh, wow. It was an actual, actual trucking company. I could see him as a boss, Kevin. We were starting, we were starting oh, oh, you mean you were a trucking company that hauled We were stuff. starting a company, yes. We had uh, one, two, three, three trucks at the time. I would imagine that's going to be lucrative, too. And then I mean, you did yeah. the one thing which you should never do when you own a company, and that's get divorced. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the time, it was a perfect timing because I gave her all my shares, and I took all my stuff, and we went separate directions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you've never and looked back. she ran ba- it into the ground. And you've never looked back. Never looked back. Yeah, that's good. What a great life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Oh wow! Kind of wish it would have worked, but because it was yeah. a good situation. But anyway. Well, you see, these are things that I have I no digress. knowledge of. You know, I mean, I've always appreciated truck drivers. <laughs> I mean, I've always, when I've seen them driving down the road, I go, "That's got to be not the easiest thing in the world." Just and think they about are, this. they yeah. are the backbone of this country. Yeah. Yeah. Just think, you think about it. Yeah. If you got it, a truck brought it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Period. Could you imagine restocking a Safeway store or Lucky's or whatever's in your neighborhood with a pickup truck? <laughs> I mean, that, that's what I mean. Semis are great for delivering large loads. Yeah, we could to haul we, toilet paper well, by the I mean, you do forty-eight have, foot load. <laughs> you, you do have trains, you know, which haul yeah, yeah. stuff. But once the train lets the load off, it has to be picked up by a truck, right? Mm-hmm. Trains, planes, and boats can't go everywhere. Yep. But trucks can. Well, not over water. For the most part, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Well, not yeah. Not uh, we got about uh, got about 30 seconds left before I start playing the theme. Uh, Amy doesn't have a show tonight, by the way. She or tomorrow, have a show or the next night. Or tomorrow. Or, or the next night. So you guys, you're left with me. Are, is Josh going to... Take over one of those nights? I don't know. I haven't talked to him about it. Yeah, I've got. I it really should. But what are they electing down in Texas? Huh? It's a, yeah. It's a well. It's a primary election runoff. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. So, so really, so who's going to run? In, who's going to run for each party in November? We'll find out tomorrow. Uh-huh. Oh well, uh-huh. I, I bet. I bet Trump wins in the Republicans. You think? Yeah. And I think Biden will probably win. For the Democrats, hasn't this been the most boring year ever? <laughs> Can I ask something? Can you guys not find anybody that's younger and more reasonable than these two morons? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. See, I, I, Joe looks like he's ready for the nursing home. He looks like he has dementia. Hey, listen, you know who I think? I it. think Trump is actually and Trump worse. does. <laughs> I mean, at least Biden doesn't fall asleep. Yeah, you know, in public, uh, and, and he looks like he is. Looks like he's standing asleep Trump, sometimes. Trump, Trump was talking to the NRA this this week, and 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 stopped for thirty seconds. Just I just stood there. Yeah. <laughs> stood there. So I, 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 Biden look, can control his if flagellants. You, if what you're saying, <laughs> yeah. Mister Mister uh, uh, Trucker from Canada, if you're what trying to say to me is. Uh, these guys are not the best candidates we could come up with. You're absolutely, no, old. absolutely correct. Yep, yeah. we know they're that too also. old. They're too they, old. We know that they, they are too old, and I'm 84, and I'm saying they're too old. Okay, because I know what I my limitations at 84. Well, how old was Obama when he got in? He was what 40s, 45, 46, think, something like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah. absolutely. Hey, listen, we gotta go. I want no, to... we don't need to go. There's no Amy. You just said, don't lie. But yeah, but the theme runs out. 
That's the problem. Uh, well, we don't hear the theme. Hey, well, we don't hear the theme. Yeah, I know you can. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, uh, Charlie for being here and Alan. Great having you here. Uh, Jeff, you haven't had much to say tonight, but then again, you never were a trucker. Uh, Brian, Sorry. always good talking with you. And uh, 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 Tony, anytime. So if you don't mind, I'm watching Breaking Bad, thanks to you. What? I am started watching Breaking Bad because she said it was so good. It's actually really good. It I'm is like, good. Oh, yeah, it's good. Really yeah, good. it's really Trucker good. Trucker Steve, love hearing from you. Please continue. call us again, will you please? Yes, love seeing you. Yeah, we were always thinking about you. And also, Kevin, thank you. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. No, uh, no, no uh, intersection tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.